Raptors point guard Kyle Lowry averaged just 14 points per game last year, the lowest among any NBA All-Star. Despite underwhelming raw numbers of late, he's now quietly made five consecutive All-Star teams, but he's often left off of top point guard lists and comes under fire for fading during the playoffs. So what gives? First, I think Lowry is often dismissed because of his lack of isolation scoring. He doesn't break ankles or slither to the hoop like Kyrie Irving or Dame Lillard. He can't always shake bigger defenders or blow by them and find comfortable looks. He struggles to turn the corner on the slower Ilya Sova here. And sometimes his size is such an issue he doesn't even look at the hoop. At about six feet tall, Lowry lacks verticality and instead uses his pronounced posterior to create space in the paint. He's actively cutting into the big man here, shielding him from his left hand. When he's driving right, he'll throw his hips back to the left into longer defenders to keep that scoop shot out of reach and create contact. He's a master at drawing fouls like this, giving him a respectable free throw rate despite his floor bound game. Again, he's leaning into the defender's space here to cut him off and absorb a foul. He's crafty in other ways too, regularly catching defenses off guard after makes. On this play, Greg Monroe had just entered the game, so Lowry calls for the screen all the way in the backcourt before charging into a reeling Monroe. There's the contact and the hoop. Lowry did this regularly throughout Toronto's playoff run when teams weren't organized getting back on defense. Then there's his passing. He's not always perfect, but it's hard to name, say, 15 better passers in the NBA. The best play right here is probably a lob to the far side of the rim, but even among the trees, Lowry holds his gaze on Van Fleet, which freezes two defenders and he knows the layup is still there. His deliveries are creative at times, making up for his lack of height to find openings he knows are available. His court mapping is top notch, on display on this very Lowry-like play, where he knows there's a layup behind him before he steals this rebound. That's just spectacular. He feathers tight interior passes like this constantly, there's the body shield again, and sometimes the windows are too tight or he can't quite create the angle he's looking for to hit the open man. But I love these ideas and most of them squeeze on through, netting positive value. This one is downright nasty, throwing it despite Embiid's presence because Joel's momentum is taking him away from the roll man. Lowry attacked Philly's drop coverage like this well in the second round, and then tortured Golden State directing the middle pick and roll in the finals. After repeatedly running pick and roll, Lowry will counter by going early. Notice Clay Thompson assumes the screen has arrived, but it's still en route, leaving this big man running in the wrong direction. Lowry's game is filled with subtle manipulation like this. Here's one where his patience pays off, yo-yoing two defenders around with upfakes before finally finding a crease. He's quite good in transition too, almost always finding streakers with outlet passes like this and ready to throw touchdowns over the top of defenses. Kalo has wonderful transition chemistry with Pascal Siakam, almost always connecting with Pascal when he makes these Killian Mbappe-like runs down the far wing. Kyle's also incredibly quick as an extra passer, eager to move the ball along, but sometimes this actually leads to overpassing. He often skips open threes like this to less favorable shooters, and this makes him passive at times when he should be pulling the trigger on these shots. Lowry's in the 84th percentile on wide open threes over the last two years, and that outside shooting is one of his best weapons. Ironically, he's aggressive in spots firing pull-up jumpers, either in early offense in transition like this, or at times when he goes to his step back. An enormous 82% of Lowry's shots were either threes or at the rim this year, a higher mark than James Harden and only slightly behind Joe Ingles among players who aren't solely finishers. And among league guards, Lowry ranks near the bottom of the league in shot attempts at the rim, taking only two and a half every 36 minutes, a combination of his lack of finishing prowess mentioned earlier and his tendency to walk into triples or launch these step backs. 
He's quite clever on defense too, often hand fighting for control of off-ball players. There's even a little extra something for J.J. Redick there at the end. And in the finals, he was quite handsy with Steph Curry, subtly rerouting him along with Fred Van Vliet on a number of plays as the series wore on. This veteran acumen and physicality helped him stick with these shifty shooters at times during the playoffs. Here, he wisely shoots the gap to stay with J.J. Redick. Although Kyle did struggle at times navigating Joel Embiid's liberal screening. Lowry doesn't have incredible lateral agility and was displaced a few times trying to trail Redick around the giant Embiid. High basketball IQ helps him too. Here Lowry sniffs out this Spurs-like play coming out of a timeout and completely blows it up. First, the grab slows Clay down just enough, then he immediately dips that right shoulder to clear the screen. Here's another typical Lowry reaction. He's early in help responsibilities as a low man, instantly realizes Siakam is there, and then peels off to stop a potential dunk. He does gamble at times, but these impromptu ambushes often work on this play, jumping into Brook Lopez's path before dishing out a wonderful little laydown in transition here. Lowry's hands are decent near the ball like this, and he's always looking to box someone out. If he doesn't fight for position like this, it's likely a layup on the rebound, but it's really his charge drawing that serves as his best defensive weapon. Lowry's among the league leaders in charges taken per minute because of his early reactions off the ball and his desire to be a human roadblock. Despite his size, this is actually a form of paint protection, deterring bigger players from finishing, here even going for a second charge. This habit landed Lowry in the 95th percentile in forced turnovers during the regular season, and he upped his charge drawing in the playoffs to an incredible one per game. That stout frame of his is also a valuable asset on switches. He can hold his ground against bigs. There's that box out. And this ability to keep bigger players at bay and still provide value in the paint helped Toronto play two six-foot point guards at length during the playoffs. The Raptors went with the Van Vliet-Lowry pairing for a whopping 661 minutes this year, and in that time they were plus 16 with a ridiculous defensive rating of 103.4. Usually playing double point guards, especially when they're small, comes with defensive sacrifices, but not with these two, largely I think because of Lowry's strengths. In the postseason, the duo played 361 minutes, a slight increase in per game frequency, and while their point differential was slightly lower against elite competition, the defensive efficiency was again suffocating. The only other team in the NBA to deploy two guards at 6'2 or shorter this year for more than 500 minutes was the Clippers, who gave up 112 points per 100 with Lou Williams and defensive pit bull Patrick Beverly on the court together. Of course, Lowry's not a strong paint presence. That verticality he lacks on offense hurts him at the rim on defense too. He'll gamble and whiff sometimes as well, as you see here. And I don't always love his man defense. He has a habit of crowding ball handlers, and this probably serves him well most of the time, but it can lead to closeouts where he's easily blown by and just flat out gets him in trouble at times when picking up the ball. Still, all that team defensive impact was enough for Lauer to be one of just nine guards to finish in the top 100 this year in RPM, adjusted plus minus, and PIPM on defense, boosting him in these impact metrics. Yes, he's a streaky shooter, and his shot has indeed abandoned him in many playoff runs over the years, but he also makes more little plays at key moments than most players ever. And for me, that total package, strong team defense, excellent passing, good shooting and stout playmaking are enough to say that in his championship run, Kyle Lowry played at an all-star level. A very special thanks to all of you international viewers out there, especially those in Canada who helped make this year so exciting. You can help support this channel by subscribing over at patreon.com thinkingbasketball. And as always, I hope you're having a great day.